In Cambridge, Massachusetts, at the Harvard Stem Cell Institute, researchers say they may have discovered a way to slow or possibly even stop the progression of type 2 diabetes, one of the world's biggest health problems. We've discovered a new hormone that tells the body to make the cells that make insulin. And as you probably know, insulin is needed by all kinds of diabetics, type 2 and type 1 diabetics, because their bodies don't make enough insulin. So we're a long way from a treatment, but if this could be used in people, what I think it, it could mean eventually is that instead of taking, say, insulin injections three times a day, you might take an injection of this hormone once a week or once a month, or in the best case, maybe even once a year. There are approximately 20 to 30 million diabetics in the United States and the disease costs an estimated $200 billion a year to treat. When we discovered this gene, we called it beta-trophin. We've done the work in mice, but of course we're not interested in curing mice of diabetes. It's only important to us if it exists in humans. So we now know the gene is a human gene. We've cloned the human gene. And moreover, we know that in human serum or in human plasma, the beta-trophin protein, this hormone, exists. On February 10, 2011, one of Doug Melton's postdoctoral fellows, Pang Yi, first observed beta-trophin stimulating the massive production of insulin-secreting cells. I just sit there at the microscope and looking at all these replicating beta cells, I just cannot believe in my eye because, you know, I have never seen this kind of dramatic replication. I remember this very well. So he showed me this black and white picture where you're looking at a section, like a section through a sausage, of the whole pancreas. And when you normally look at a black and white picture of that, it's very hard to tell where the beta cells are, the insulin cells. But in this test, the, any cell that was dividing would shine up bright white, like a sparkle. I've never seen any treatment that causes such an enormously kind of fast and robust increase in beta cell replication. When we made this discovery, we started working with a biotech company in Germany called Evatech. And soon thereafter, a third party entered the collaboration, Janssen, a part of Johnson & Johnson. And so now it's a broad collaboration with these pharmaceutical companies. If things go well, in two to three years, we could be to the point of testing this hormone in humans. While Melton believes the beta-trophin hormone will be most useful in type 2 diabetes, it may have wider applications. I think this hormone might be useful for juvenile diabetes at the early onset period, sometimes known as the honeymoon period where they've begun to have the disease, but it's not in full force. They still have some remaining or residual insulin-producing cells. We could provide the hormone at that stage and then maybe forestall or even reverse the onset of that disease. Approximately 80% of the money for this research was provided by the National Institutes of Health as part of the recent Obama stimulus package. In this case, one could say that the stimulus package stimulated us to make a discovery. Type 2 diabetes can be treated through both lifestyle changes, mainly more exercise and healthy eating, and through drug treatments. I'm not one to say what that balance should be, but I do expect this hormone will be a central player in that balance. If we're lucky and if we're right, and we don't know that yet, but if this hormone can have the body make its own insulin, this will then replace much of the insulin injections, and I think will stand as an important finding in how we treat this disease.